Hey, it's Travis with T-Customs Productions, T-Customs.com, and today's video is going to be a revamp on an older tutorial that I shot on how to chop samples in Ableton Live. Uh, that was shot in Ableton Live 8, and this is obviously in Ableton Live 9. I want to show you guys the easiest method that I've found to chop samples, get in right away and start working with them. There's a lot of different ways that you can manipulate audio and chop your samples, but I just want to show you the most straightforward way that I've found, the technique that I've been using for a number of years. So the approach I want to take is a few part series in this first video. I want to get right into the meat and potatoes on how you can chop your samples, get right in and start working, getting your hands dirty right away. And then as we get into some of the later videos, I'll start to describe some more of the advanced features and functionality and that way you can customize your settings exactly to how you would need to manipulate and chop your samples. Uh, so what we're going to do starting out is you can see I have an audio track here and just want to identify whatever sample you want to use whether it's an mp3 or WAV format. Just want to drag that sample over uh, to an audio track. And one other thing I want to mention really quickly is we're not going to worry about this global tempo. So whatever it's set at now for you, don't worry about that too much. By default in Ableton, whenever you drag over a new audio file, it typically will enable this warp engine and it might even do some manipulation on the audio depending on what tempo it is. But the first thing we want to do for this slicing method is we want to unwarp whatever Ableton's already done. So we just want to click this warp button here. It's going to take everything back to its original speed and tempo and all that. So now that we have the audio completely unmanipulated, I'm just gonna go ahead and play back just this little snippet of audio that we're gonna be using for this demonstration. One other thing real quickly that you'll notice is this little gap, this little silence audio right here. And some, many times what I'll do is I'll just bring over this starting place to wherever the audio actually starts, that would be optional. But basically once we have the audio unwarped, we want to re-enable the warp engine because we're actually going to be using warp markers to slice this sample up. And so we're going to hit yes. And now is where we're going to actually get in and pick our sample slices. And so you can basically just click anywhere in here and you'll see that it adds new warp markers. Now traditionally warp markers, the warp engine is used to stretch the audio. So for instance, if I wanted to do a time stretch and stretch this, just keep in mind for this technique that we are only using warp markers as starting places for the sample slice. And so now we just want to figure out what sample slices that we want. So keep in mind, I put those warp markers in kind of quickly. They might not be on the exact places that I want, but I'm just using this for the demonstration. Once you have these set in place, these are now going to be your slice points. And so all you're going to have to do with any full version of Ableton Live 9 is right click on the audio file up here and you're going to slice the new MIDI track. Now to get right into slicing a sample, you can go ahead and use the built-in slicing preset. And again, in the future videos, I'm going to describe how you can get more control over your samples. You can set it up like NPC style. There's a lot of different features and functionality that you're probably going to want to take advantage of. Where it says create one slice per, what we actually want to set this to is a warp marker. Um, and it's going to slice on every place where we have this warp marker set. Now what you saw also here was the transient. Now if you'll notice, I'm going to close this out really quickly and just show you these little white markers are called transients where Ableton automatically detects a change in the audio and includes these transients. And so if you don't even want to go through and pick your points and you want to kind of like auto slice it, uh, you could actually just right click on the audio form, slice into MIDI and just do transient and it will actually slice where all these white pieces are. The only problem with that is that you don't always know where Ableton is going to pick transients. It might not be on the places that you want. So that's kind of a caveat. And then also you can auto slice by bar, half note and all these settings here. But what we're going to do today is the warp marker. And again, for the sake of this example and getting right in, get your hands dirty, we're going to use the built in slicing preset. We're going to click OK. And so what you're going to see this does is it creates a MIDI track with a drum rack in it. And so this drum rack has up to 128 total cells. We only have 15 sample slices for this, but it's going to put all your sample chops in a drum rack. Using any kind of MIDI keyboard or controller, you'll be able to trigger your samples. I'm using an MPK-49 right now to trigger these samples. 
with this slicing preset, you'll notice that there's already some global parameters here that you can control and manipulate the samples to. It also puts all these sample chops in a MIDI track, which you're probably not gonna want because you're gonna wanna create your own uh, MIDI sequence here. So you just wanna delete that track and now you have basically all your samples in a drum rack and you're able to trigger them through your MIDI controller. And so without going into some of the more advanced features yet and just you wanna get in and start making music right away, you can use the built-in slicing presets. And if you probably saw up here, if you right click again and slice in the MIDI track, built in is just one of the presets and there's you know a lot of other stock presets and what we're going to be talking about in the next upcoming video is actually how you can create your own custom slice preset and the benefits the big time benefits to doing that but this will get you in right away use the stock presets in ableton and stay tuned for the next video where we go into some of the more advanced functionality thanks for watching if this video was helpful please make sure to like comment share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video